never knows how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I'm I am not an African American. You're Oreo cookie, white on the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an Afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I will slap you. Go ahead, make my day. Black as the ace of spades, but 100, 100 percent American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. United the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I want to just play you some sound bites from this scam that's happening in uh, Florida right now. The trial of Joyce Zimmerman for the killing of Trayvon Martin. And I've said all along that... I have no respect for Trayvon Martin's parents because I know that this is a scam. The fact that they turned it into a race issue, had another black person killed Trayvon Martin, you would not have heard a word from their parents about this. Not one iota of a word. They uh, would have buried the boy and went on about their business. But because it's a white-on-black situation, even though George is part Hispanic, um, they, they're using it to their advantage, and it's, separ- and it's separating the races even more so. And when they called Sharpton and Jackson and all those folks in, um, I knew then it was a mess. I really, really did. Uh, and this, his mother, Sabrina, I believe her name is, Calling, saying that Trayvon called her cupcakes, and we used to talk and we play around. And I just lost my baby, my poor baby. I didn't fall for that for one second. If I don't know nothing else, I know black people. I know black folks. I know how they think. I know how they function. I know how they speak. I know what they say in private. I know how they feel about white folks. I know how they love to get something for nothing. I know how black people think. I really do. And most black people, I'm not the only one, most black people know how black people are. They really, really, white folks may be confused, and others may be confused by blacks, but we know, don't we, black people? We know. And I guarantee you, if the average black person would be honest, they would say, child, that, that, that woman knew that boy wasn't no, they'll use another word, that boy wasn't no good. They, they, they were, I'm, they were saying that in private. And I'm sure that even Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, and others are saying the same thing. I haven't heard it, but I'm pretty sure because they know how black people are. They know that these people are not raising decent young black folks uh, in today's America. Trayvon Martin's stepmother, Alicia Stanley, I believe that's her name, uh, said that she raised Trayvon Martin. Uh, She said that I don't think Zimmerman picked Martin because he was black. This this is from CNN and Anderson Cooper 360. And this interview was from June 28th, which was uh, last Friday, I think. Here is Alicia. She said that she met... Trayvon's father when Trayvon was three years old. So I don't think a lot of people know your story and your relationship with Trayvon. You were his stepmother for for a long, long time. Yes, for 14 years. 14 years. 14 and a half, you could say. 14 and a half years. How much role did you have in, in actually raising him? Um, hands on. I mean, I've been with his father for 14 years. Trayvon was about three when um, I met his father. And ever since then, I mean, Trayvon been in my life, and I've been nothing more than a mother to him. You know, he was raised with my girls. I have two daughters, so Trayvon... He lived in your house? Yes, he lived in, he lived in uh, my house with me and his father and my girls. And Trayvon wanted to live with us. And Trayvon was to our house in my home 85 to 95 
90% of the time. Wow. And if that is true, when did he have time to play with cupcakes? <laughs> if that's, that's true, when did he play with cupcake? When did he have time to call his, uh, uh, his mother cupcake if he's with this woman 85 to 90% of the time? That's for always almost. Sabrina Fulton, his mother, said, oh, he always wanted to help me. He was very concerned. We just talked. And, and he called me Cupcake. Do we have that when she said he called me Cupcake? I, I think we played that. Let me know if we do, Andre, so the folks can hear it for themselves. Somebody lying somewhere. Um... And you remember when this woman was going in the media looking like she was really hurt and just, his mother, he, he was really hurt and just couldn't believe it. He called me Cupcake. This woman said that, and later on we'll play where she says that Trayvon never even mentioned his mother to her. So he's with his stepmother 85 to 90% of the time, he never mentioned his mother. He never mentioned Cupcake. 888-7753-773. I'll take your call after this message. Girl, I've been thinking about us, and you know I ain't good at this stuff. But these feelings piling up won't give me no rest. This might come out a little crazy. Such a good time together, and it's only just begun. My heart's never smiled so hard, baby. Loving you is fun. So, the stepmother of Trayvon Martin, Alicia Stanley, during an interview on CNN, Anderson Cooper, 360, uh, from June 28, says that. Trayvon Martin was with her 80 to 90 percent of the time. This is during the time that Trayvon Martin's father and this woman was married, according to her. And yet we heard Sabrina, Trayvon's mother, saying that, oh, they call me Cupcake. Here's Sabrina. Sabrina, it's been so many things going around about Trayvon. Stories here, stories there. You're his mother. What do you want people to know about your son? Well, that's probably the only thing that really makes me smile, mm -hmm. is just <laughs> thinking about his smile, thinking about him always trying to help me around the house. Always. Uh, me taking him to school, him Thank listening to music and things like that. Uh, he would always try to help me out around the house. And sometimes I even pretended like I couldn't do things. Right. And he would tell me, I got it, Cupcake. <laughs> So I just remember and I try to focus on those things that make me smile, those things that make me think about right. the good things, the good times with him. You make me smile, please stay for a while. Wherever you go, I always know. Now, when did Trayvon have time to help her around the house and always do things for her and call her cupcake if... He's spending 80 to 90% of the time with his stepmother and his, and his father. When? 85 to 90% of the time with his stepmother, according to this woman. When did he call you Cupcake? That would be my next question. <laughs> and he would tell me, I got it, Cupcake. <laughs> That's going to be a sound bite forever. Is that something? So, but this woman, the stepmother, said, hey, he was with me 85 to 90% of the time, and he never even mentioned his mother to her. Never talked about Cupcake. Somebody lying. Uh, Alicia was asked, or she explained why she's doing this interview. Um, is there anything else you want people to know? I'm here with you to let people know I exist. And I will not sit back anymore 
and take the lies that's out there being told. Uh -huh. I'm the one that went to them football games. I'm the one was there when he was sick. I mean, every time he got sick, if he wasn't at our home, we had to go pick, Tracy picked him up and brought him back to our home to, 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 to make him better. He wanted, I want people to know to that he better. wanted to live with me and his father. He didn't, are you saying he didn't have much of a relationship with his biological No, mother? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that he didn't have a relationship with her. What kind of relationship that they had, I don't know. And being with Trayvon, Trayvon didn't speak of his mother a lot. Wow. Okay? I didn't speak towards his mother in no way, in no fashion. Never want, and, and I want her to know, too, that I never tried to take her place. Never. So why would Cupcake <laughs> allow the stepmother to pick up her son when he's sick? Not cupcake. And if Trayvon is with her, the stepmother, 85 to 90% of the time, when did he have time to help her clean, help cupcake clean? I'm just saying. Now, look, I'm slow. I know I'm black and I'm slow. I get there a little late. But I'm missing this one, folks. Uh, here's one other Then I'll take some calls on this. Uh, F, Alicia, Alicia says... She was devastated that they would, wouldn't let her sit in the front row of Trayvon's funeral. It's got to be so hard to, to have raised this, this child, young man, mm -hmm. to have, have him lose his life and to, to feel like all of that has been forgotten oh, or yeah. ignored. Yeah, it, it, it... To be alone with that grief. It, yes, it, it was devastating to know that... Oh. A child you raised, help raised, and and in death you mean nothing. But when he was alive, I was his stepmother. But in death, I'm not his stepmother. I don't love him because he's he he, he done passed. That's unbelievable, and I couldn't believe that these people was doing this. I mean, get in where I fit in, in the funeral. I can't sit on the front row to at my son's funeral to to see him off home that hurts me that's the most painful thing that they have done to me you weren't allowed to sit in the front row no 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 i had to sit in where i've been in you know to say them things to me and think it's okay that wasn't okay wow you made me smile. Please stay for a while. Thank and he you. would tell me, I got it, Cupcake. <laughs> Woo, what type of cupcake is this? This must be one of those hard, overcooked cupcakes. That's what it sounds like to me. 888-775-3773. This is amazing, folks. I have some more. You haven't heard anything yet. It get better before it gets worse. Let's see here. Let's go down to Connecticut and talk to... My friend Gene. Jesse, how are you, sir? All is well. Where have you been, man? Oh, I've been all over. Work, 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 and more work. But I, I always take the time to take a couple of minutes out of my day and catch one of the greatest radio shows in America, Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, and it's glad to be back. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, Gene. I appreciate you. I just want to commentate on this uh, Trayvon Martin case. Um, it, it's clearly that the mainstream media, these so-called nationalist black leaders have twisted this thing and turned this thing to solely a, a racially motivated kind of case. That's why it's received so much media attention. Yeah. And that's why it's received so much press because it, it's the idea that was perceived. It's again, dividing the racial line. Like this man, they, they believe that at the time that he was a white man who killed a young boy, that, that's what was being spread out to the media. And that's what in, incited these groups to come down in, in major numbers uh, the NAACP, the uh, Congressional Black Caucus, even the, the New Black Panthers, uh, to put on a $10,000 bounty on this man's head solely on the idea that this was a racially motivated crime. But as we see a year later, there's way more to this story than we could ever thought. I just want to say that if, if looking at the case, 
um, from my assessment, given the information that's been given to the media and other outlets, that this is not a murder case. They have not yet to prove that this was a murder. At yeah. best, this is a self-defense case, at best. Had this been a black uh, black situation, we would not have heard anything about it. Not one iota of a word. It, it's George Zimmerman's last name was George Jackson, and he was a black neighborhood watchman who happened to shoot this young black boy. It probably wouldn't have made the six o'clock news in the local area, let alone national attention. This this whole case is driven by liberal racism in the media, in our culture, in the community. They say they say conservatives are, are, are the ones that, that demonize and the ones that are solely focused on race. But I see all this racial propaganda being spewed from the mainstream radio media yep. and from the mainstream television media. You know, Gene, you're absolutely right, man. And it's not going to end until white Americans and black folks who love what's right stand up and say no more. They have to say no more to the intimidation of these race hustlers and poverty pimps. They have to say no more to the liberal media. And then this stuff will start to resolve itself. But until that happens, it's just going to get worse. Again, you know, no one, no one, no one likes to talk about the fact that George Zimmerman suffered, suffered several injuries, facial injuries and right. head injuries. They like to sweep that under the rug.